She's responsible for a whole brand of makeup. She's truly one of the most glamorous people I've ever met. She's very much like um, um, Joan Collins, an Ava Gardner. She's a beauty. And then chewing the fat this evening, we have the wonderful Ben Duncan. We have my yoga teacher, Marnie. <laughs> We have Ebbs Akatunde. Hey, my eyes. But before all that, listen to this. While my heart is young. And eager to fly I'll give my heart a try I'll take romance Yes, I'll take romance While my arms are strong and eager for you I'll give my arms their cue I'll take romance So my lover when you want me call me in the hush of the evening First real romance While my heart is young and eager and gay I'll give my heart away I'll take romance about that we are often um congratulated on on the choice of music we play on the late show and every single track we play is given a huge amount of thought and usually it's mel who chooses the tracks but this one was chosen for me that was the fantastic sound of ken slavin who i have never met before <laughs> and he is sitting here in front of me you are so clean oh. there's no there's no other you are just it's you are scrubbed it's wonderful all i can see are these amazing teeth and a whiff of cologne. Oh, thank it's you. Just I hope the cologne wasn't too strong. <laughs> no, it, it, you you are so well turned out. Oh well, thank you very much. Which is, I love I love people that come in groomed, you know, instead of just slobbing in, which a great many people will. I hope there's no one waiting out there who's about to do that. No, you, it's mm. it's lovely. Well, your, that's nice of you to say. Well, your thank appearance you. matches your voice. Actually, it's oh, quality. Do you well, know what I mean? Thank you. Thank you very much. That's a um, lovely thing to say. That is um, that, I've had a really weird night because I went to see uh, the premiere of Driving Miss Day. 
amazing. Oh, it must have been fabulous. It was extraordinary, and it left me in a. You know, when you see uh, uh, anything that just or anything creative in the arts, or whatever, without sounding too indulgent, mm-hmm. it literally blows you away. It does. And um, and it was ninety minutes long, so usually I can't. I always have to leave at the interval because I have to get back to do the show. Oh, it was without an inter- intermission. No interval, it went straight yeah, through? Oh. which is a brilliant thing to do. I yeah. think get it out the way, and then yes. I ran back through Soho, just like tears streaming down my face, thinking about this amazing play. Thank you, Golly, what's on the show? Because I had no idea you were on. <laughs> and that just eased me in to the oh. show. It was the perfect punctuation mark for the, for the oh, show. Oh, how wonderful. I'm glad. And on, on this was opening night for that show? Yeah, yeah. Well, I heard, I heard you say something about it right at the top of the hour about James Earl Jones, of course, being the co-star. I've worked with him in San Antonio before. Um, I... Part of my life is a publicist and part of my life is a jazz singer and becoming more and more of a jazz yes. singer. But I handled all of his press uh, when we did the 100th anniversary of the San Antonio Public Library wow. in Texas. And he was one of the classiest celebrities I've ever worked with. I He's bet. a wonderful man. I, do you know, I believe that. Just I'm Not just because of the role he was playing, which was just so warm and wonderful. But I think I read an interview with him that, that he he admitted that his um, his parents never loved him or something and that he's tried all the time. He tried all through his childhood to get their love or something. He did have that problem and he also had a speech impediment. He really? stuttered. He stuttered growing up and he talked about it openly in our uh, interviews with the San Antonio Press. Um, he had to overcome that, but he has this mellifluous, mm. fabulous voice and you would never know it, but he had to teach himself to overcome stuttering even as an, a young adult. He's one of those old time star, old time isn't the right word, Word, but of the old school. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. He, he took pictures with every, we used, we had a lot of children at this event. Every child who wanted a photo, every mother who wanted a photo, anyone, he was just gracious as could be. And when he told us the story about the stuttering, I couldn't believe it no. because his is a voice that people emulate, yes. you know, and he was the voice of Darth Vader. Yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, no, he, he, extraordinary. And talking of voices, uh, so is yours. Oh, um, thank you. And, I, and it's really interesting you saying that, um, that the more you work, the more successful you're becoming, actually, in jazz. Yes. But I, is that is that because um, I don't, a voice in the style of singing you do gets better and better as you get older? I'm, I'm, I mean, you're you're not old by any no, means. No, but I totally know but, what you mean. <laughs> but does it is it a good is it a good maturity? Do you think? Yes, I think so. Um, I actually. To begin with, I started late. I was 29 when I started singing, and it was because it was a long time fantasy and dream of mine to sing but i didn't start till then and the kind of material i do which is you know the 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 jazz classics and the 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 standard classics of the mid 20th century basically um they take a you have to kind of under you really have to understand the lyrics everyone's sung them you know they've been done by frank sinatra and everybody in the world but i found that as i've gotten older and as i've done more and more performing which it it is more it's more performing now than the public relations work and living life. Yes. I, I just turned 50 in August, and I find myself singing songs in entirely different ways now because I actually have lived and understand yes. the lyrics, you know, yes. whether they're happy or sad or poignant or romantic or whatever. Isn't that interesting? That's one of the few advantages of growing old, isn't it? In, yes. in your style of, of work, I can absolutely understand because, as you say, many of the songs that you sing have been sung by, well, the I mean, you list here people that you actually have met, like Matt Munro mm-hmm. and people like that, that Sinatra you obviously never met. No, but, no. but do you know what I mean? So so there is always that comparison, isn't there? Between the yes, great- and you know, that, that can be a problem for someone in my genre because you don't want anyone to ever think that you're a copycat yeah. artist. So I've, I try very hard to put my own stamp on things. And your, your uh, discussion about the way a voice changes as you get older, I can't stand to listen to anything I recorded 20 years ago. But you loved <laughs> listening to that because it was a joy watching you. When that track went on, you were enjoying it as much as well, I was. Well, I was, and part of it was because it sounded so beautiful in your studio. I, haven't, I know. I haven't listened to that album in a long time. don't you love the lighting? Time. I have yeah. it like this so I look young. So you, you look, and I look like children. Well, we do, here. but you, I mean, you look fabulous, that dress. <laughs> and look, I love, in I love daylight, the you'd scream. No. But it takes me forever to have, because I also 
also believe in theatre, and I always, I can never understand why you would want a, a, a fluorescently lit studio. It's all to do with lighting, isn't well, it? Well, this is this is like coming to someone's uh, living room and yeah, sitting down lovely, and talking. I think it's gorgeous, and the the deep reds. Yes, it's exactly. A, it's a very romantic and passionate and yet lighthearted room. I love. Thank it. you for that. A bit womb like. <laughs> um, I love the thing. I love it when you say that you used to dance with your mother in the sixties. Yes, I did. Was that so? What were you listening to in the sixties? Well, back then. Then, of course, I was very small, but my mother had me when she was 20. She was very young. And we were living in New York then. And she would turn on the American Bandstand show every afternoon. Back then, it was on every day, Monday through Friday. And she uh, taught me how to dance the twist and the mashed oh. potatoes and the all these different kinds of dances. And I would dance on her feet. You know the way yes, like little girls... no, gir- I did that like with my girl- father. Absolutely. Okay. Little girls usually do that with their yeah. dads. I did it with my mother. And um, she uh, taught me how to, you know, to do the Lindy Hop and the Jitterbug and all these dances. And it was a very... It, it was just a natural thing. All growing up, even into my teen years and into college, she and I would go out dancing. She, my mother's my best friend, yeah, and she fantastic. and she's just and she was a great dancer on top of it. It's all. so yeah. funny because my mother used to win twisting competitions, and I oh. said I spent my childhood looking at my mother's bottom in fringe trousers, going up and down and round and round. That is you know? fantastic. Uh, yeah, well, I don't know. It's her point of view, I suppose.